call the meeting to order it's July 18th, a little after nine o'clock. Let's please rise for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, roll call, please. Ms. Reagan. Present. Mr. King. Here. Mr. Henry. Here. Mr. Brooke. Present. All right. We have a public hearing um, application for assignment of tax sales certificate to nonprofit corporation in 2000 block of North Shirey Road. Is anyone here to speak about this? For or against. For or against. Go right in. Sir, I don't hear all that good, but I'll uh, we read need, it. We need, right. need your name and address, address, please, sir. Your name and address for the records. Well, we're at 20, uh, 2009 North Country Club, uh, uh, Mannering Street in Muncie, the church. And so I'm standing in proxy of the church. And uh, well, it's uh, lot 21, I believe. Yes, correct. And uh, you want a reason that we want to, the land? Yes, I yes that's correct. Uh, well, sir, we've been there 27 years in the church, and it's never been cleaned up around there. It's for anybody to see. And we're wanting the land so we can clean it up. Uh, we've been trying to grow with the church. In fact, in fact, it doesn't have anything to do with a lot, maybe, but in the last uh, two or three weeks, I've spent over $12,000 on the building that we're in, trying to update it. And that's what we want a lot. We want so we can clean it up and tear a bunch of old fences down and have a, uh, when you drive down Shari Road, it look like uh, a nice place. <laughs> that's what we're after. And so uh, we have, uh, ever since we've been there, we started took the building and started building up, and we're not wanting to harm anyone or, or have problems over it. I'd rather just phase it out if that would be the problem. But we want to do it for the church. I think it's proper that the house of God ought to be recognized, and uh, we picked up through the years truckloads of just trash and stuff and it's right now we have pictures of, and it's just completely surrounding the, the church with automobiles and uh, so I'm not saying anything about the cars that's up to the that's up to the, the city but uh, that's why we want the property to fix it up and where we can mow it and keep it mowed and and that's, I have uh, tried to do that for all these years, and I continue doing it. The property is not all that valuable property. I would add this, that I one time the church had that property, and uh, so uh, I bought the property for the church, the, uh, the lot, and I own 25 feet of that lot now. And uh, so the thing was when I got the lot was that they would, they, when they surveyed it, uh, come close to their property. And it, so the guy came and was troubled over it. And uh, so I let him have the property, but he never did do anything. That, it was a handshake thing that he would keep it cleaned up and, uh, uh, so that's about it, I guess. Um, sir, um, I was a little late to the meeting today because I hadn't really done my homework, but I did drive by there today. And I did take some pictures, and I'm appalled at this lot that um, no one on either side of the houses down the road had not called in. And um, I see your concern. And I was kind of curious if that fence was yours or not. So now you explained it. 
So I understand that on good faith, you would, were hoping that he would clean it up and keep it grass cut and whatnot. So uh, I appreciate that, and uh, yeah, it's a problem. That's on Shari. Is anyone else here to speak in reference to this piece of property? I thought for sure someone might show up. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. I'll second that. Motion and a second. Roll call. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Henry. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Have you. a seat. And, uh, if you could stay another 15, 20 minutes. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Table business, letter of intent agreement, property exchange between the commissioners and Muncie Sanitary District. Recycle. Let's go ahead and keep the table. Keep the table. Approval of the minutes from July 5th. Uh, I'd like to uh, correct the minutes that um, they were so eloquent. Uh, they were very nicely done, but there was an error that. <coughs> The commissioners do own the lot up in um, Gaston, but it's the town of Gaston that wants to develop it. I changed that. Do you I didn't it, see it. Do you want to make a motion with that yeah. correction? I've got it changed right here. Oh, let me look. <clears throat> see if that's right. Prep, first page. Don't mark on it. It says the commissioners have, but I thought mine said they wanted to develop, that they want, it should say that Gaston wants to develop. And maybe I missed it last week when I corrected them for you. I can change it. Yeah. You want to approve it with that change? Yes. You want to make a motion? Yes. So second. Moved. Okay, we have a motion with a second with the corrections. Roll call, please. Mr. Yes. King. Yes. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Mr. Henry. Yes. Okay. Presentation to the commissioners. <laughs> Contracts or agreements for approval. Rules for loading facility engineering proposal. Commissioners Brad Bookout with Delaware County Economic Development. Uh, thank you. Um, I have before you a proposal from CHA Engineering. Uh, as you're aware, uh, you tasked me with uh, getting the rail spur that Delaware County currently owns back up and running and operational. Uh, we have worked with good industries uh, out of Camden, Ohio to do just that. We have developed a book of business. We have three potential companies in Delaware County who are interested in shipping via the rail spur. Um, we need to complete the engineering uh, for a transloading facility so that they can actually have a platform by which to load and unload trucks and train cars and actually right away to bring trucks in and out of the facility. Um, CHA uh, Engineering, which was formerly uh, RW Armstrong Engineering, was the original contractor, our original engineering company that put everything together for the rail spur and did all of that work. Um, they have offered to do a supplemental uh, report or a supplemental uh, scope of services uh, for the project for $67,700. Uh, total cost of building this uh, uh, rail spur loading and unloading platform is estimated to be around $405,000, but we don't have it designed yet, so we can't send anything out to bid, so we really don't know. Um, as you're aware and has been uh, reported in the newspaper, uh, Bravini will be making a payback to the county in 2017. Uh, I did work with you to include in your edit plan uh, sufficient funding to pay for this contract and get things underway. Uh, of which I believe that uh, if Bravini pays back their funding that it could reimburse the edit uh, in 2017. 
Uh, so I ask for your approval for this today. I know there's some companies that would like to get underway uh, with loading and unloading and shipping via the spur. And uh, we'd like to see a train go down the tracks. So, so with your approval, I'll get things started. I hadn't heard what it might cost, but in a few years, I'm sure it would pay for itself. Because uh, we did have some good conversation that there was going to be other people, maybe, yes, in the area. Yes, correct. That yeah, could use it yeah. And, and uh, yeah, we would like to, uh, you know, some of our initial thought was uh, that this spur be available for those companies within Delaware County who would like to ship by a, via a spur. Our this region. is an available entity to them that's owned by the county. Yeah. They just have to pay for their loading and unloading uh, of, the, of the goods and, and bringing the train cars to the facility. But basically, you know, the county provides it gratis to those companies. So it's a nice, uh, it's a nice attraction tool for, for the county. <coughs> I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second that. We have a motion to approve and a second. Roll call, please. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Mr. Kane. Yes. Mr. Henry. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. We have a micro vote for general corporation three year full service contract. Mike King, Delaware County Clerk. Um, I'm here today on behalf of the election board asking that you table this until your next meeting. Um, we have uh, a state election board meeting on the 27th, and we may need to add another um, part to this contract. So I'm just asking you to table it while we work that out. For that. Yes, you'll need a motion to the table. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Kane. Yes. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Mr. Henry. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. King. We have a lease agreement for five Explorer vehicles that the County Council will purchase. Chair. I have, I have looked at it. Okay. I have seen no objection to it. Where are these vehicles coming from? Um, Dillon Ford. Dillon Ford. Good. So how, how okay. soon can they get here? It's eight to ten weeks delivery time once we order. Ray, was you in the you was in the council meeting when they agreed to purchase these, correct? Roll call, please. Ms. Riggin. Yes. Mr. Kane. Yes. Mr. Henry. Yes. Thanks, Ray. Thank you. <clears throat> Go down to resolutions for approval. Resolution number 2016. What is the number? 039, I believe. Is it 039? I believe that's the one. Yes. Resolution 2016 039, resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the County of Delaware, Indiana, making a final determination on tax sales certificate to be assigned to a nonprofit corporation number eight. <coughs> I still move that also. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. King. Yes. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Mr. Henry. Yes. Um, Janet, um, would you tell the pastor, how, how do the uh, letters go out to um, anybody? Uh, it's different for a nonprofit. Since we have a public hearing and a legal notice published in the newspaper, we don't send out to um, the adjoining property owners. But they will have the responsibility as if they're the tax sale buyer and do a title search and send out notifications. And I believe they uh, already employed a, an attorney to help them. So they don't have to knock on the door? No. Thank you. <coughs> yes. Resolution number 2016 dash, is that 040? <coughs> yes. Resolution of the Board of Commissioners, the County of Delaware, Indiana, approving an amendment to the plan for the Nebo Road Economic Development Area.
uh, Tom Pittman from uh, Barnes and Lumber. The resolution before you is a resolution that would approve the removal of a parcel from the Nebo Road TIF district. That parcel is tied to providing an incentive to Dellen. Nick Dellen is here to talk about the project for which he's requesting an incentive. Um, and so procedurally, I can tell you that the, can you hear me? Is it recording, Denise? Mm -hmm. Okay. Procedurally, the, the Delaware County Redevelopment Commission has approved this action, as has the Plan Commission. At the same time, the City Redevelopment Commission has approved establishing the same parcel as a city uh, TIF district, and the Plan Commission has approved that uh, as well. Um, if, well, by, by the city creating this as a city TIF district, the city is able to have a term for that TIF district that's quite a bit longer than the, than the county can have under current law. And so we're dealing with one parcel. This process was recommended by, by Lauren Mathis uh, at, at HJ on the law as the most efficient way to provide the incentive also to isolate the source of the incentive to the one, uh, to the one parcel. Uh, and uh, I think Nick can answer questions again on his project or procedurally if you have questions that I could answer, I'd be happy to do so. Tom, <clears throat> so we're removing this out of the Nebo TIF? Yes. And the city of Muncie is gonna start their own TIF with this yeah. area? Yes, if, if the law allowed you to have the same length of life for this parcel as it allows the city, we wouldn't. How many yeah. years are we talking? Uh, the, the clock has been running uh, since probably, I don't know, I think we have maybe 12 years left on this parcel at the Delaware County level. At the city level, uh, the parcel will have uh, at least 25 years <coughs> of life. And so it provides more flexibility for the incentive. The, uh, Dellen will, uh, will be the first source of repayment of the incentive, but their repayment obligation will be offset by tax increment generated by their development. Well, I'll be honest, I kind of got most of this information just with my packet and didn't know much about it. As far as the development goes itself, um, I think we have drainage issues in that area. Where, what, what kind of drainage plan is there in place for this? Sure, good morning. Uh, Nick Dillon, Dillon on the uh, Currently there's a pond on the property close to the uh, stoplight. We're actually moving that to the other side of the property so that we have retention. Um, currently working through that with uh, HWC and some other other contractors to get that taken care of. John, there's no way that we can get any kind of extension on our. Well, I think that's something that you can explore because you can you can extend out the TIF based on the bonds. Not yeah, not there. We've done that before. Well, uh, you, you uh, I'm sorry, John. You did that pursuant to a very special narrow law that, that actually won't be available to you at this time. That law uh, expired July 1st of 2015. Action had to be taken by then, uh, and so you're out of past that window. Uh, I, Todd Donetti with the Muncie Redevelopment Commission. I will, I, I want to answer your question on drainage. There is a very uh, sophisticated plan that is in place that we're going to uh, allow for the better drainage out there. By the way, it'll be an improvement of the drainage. It also, uh, we'll de be dealing with going in the uh, southeasterly direction. So everything will flow that way. And that there, there'll be a plan in place uh, for, to is, present that. Is, is there currently a plan in place? 
Uh, it's not completed yet, but there will be a plan in place. Uh, they're, they're in the design stage right now to get that resolved. Um, and the, you know, you got to keep in mind too that we, we're, we're going to be trying to do this to benefit any future growth out there as well because there's 38 acres and these guys are only going to be using about 12 of those acres and uh, the pond will take up probably another uh, you know, five or six acres if not more and so that is going to leave uh, the additional you know, probably 16, 15, 16 acres for development and that's, the, that's what the advantage is. One of the other things that by doing this through the city we don't care one way or the other. I mean we, we, we could have partnered with you uh, like we did on the American Chevrolet side where we would have had to go through these steps and you guys had 50%, we would have 50% and you make the pledges and you make this thing work. The, the, the two most important uh, things about this is not only the extension of the time that is needed to make this project work, but it's also typically if there's a revenue source in these TIF areas, the banks usually want to tie into that source. This removes that option and makes it uh, self-contained on, on a single allocation area. So uh, you guys have revenue coming in from the, the, I think it's the Toyota and the Benson motorcycles. This is, that's going to remain with you and you will be able to use that for your TIF areas as indicated, but uh, this will remove any uh, source that the bank would have to tie that uh, as a backup. What kind of bonding are you looking at for Right, right now we have it uh, approved through the city council with a, a pledge agreement of not to exceed 25 years on that bond. Uh, we, we hope to go uh, 20 years, that's typically what we like to do, but you always put in the not to exceed 25 just for the purpose of trying to get the rate and get the bond uh, <coughs> purchased but, uh, um, and get it to fit within the allocations uh, revenue expectations. How much of a bond are you looking at? Probably 2.3 million. Uh, that's what's usually anticipated. Uh, the road is projected to come in, and right now it's it's uh, uh, projected to come in about 2.7 million. Uh, we're trying to work on getting that cost down, but a lot of that contains what we call future development uh, uh, necessities for infrastructure. But at the same time, uh, Dellen has agreed that if it, if it stays at 2.7 and our allocation only allows the $2.3 million, they're gonna pay the difference. Uh, so that's, that's one of the advantages. We're gonna get it done and get it done right. Do you know what the interest, interest rate on the bond is? You know, at this point in time, it, it, we're deciding whether we wanna go a tax uh, exempt bond or, or a uh, taxable bond, and it could range anywhere from, I'm hoping 4.5% to 6.5%. Typically, when you go ta a taxable bond, uh, when you're ex especially when you're going into the 20-year fixed rate areas, the banks want to try to give you a little bit more interest. But uh, we're trying to work on that. We work. I'm working with a couple of local banks, and hopefully, anticipate that that rate will not not get to the six and a half percent. Either way, we have to. We want to make sure that we're within our revenue source that, that's coming in from the allocation area. We think this is a great development for the area. Uh, the whole process when we did the American Chevrolet, the Kia, and now that we, and we had the Toyota, the Benz Motorcycles, developed this area as an auto mall to attract uh, not only uh, in-town but out-of-town out town purchasers. Uh, we think this will be the catalyst to expediting the future development, not only on the side that the American Chevrolet is on, but on this side as well. And, uh, that could spur restaurants, uh, hotels, uh, big box stores. This, with this kind of traffic, not only having the Meyer and the Menards in that same area is going to allow for, for that type of uh, development, and it's beneficial for both of us in the long run. Is there any plan for the uh, current Bill and Ford building? Yeah, well, uh, I can tell you, and I can't say the source, but I can tell you that the current Hyundai dealership has been sold. The property has been sold. They've, they've already moved those Hyundai cars out to the Dillon, so they're sharing dealerships right now. And um, we have about a half a dozen interested parties in looking at their building. We're, we're aggressively going at it. They also are aggressively have a realtor that's involved in it. Uh, we have some interest in that part, part of the town. The Kmart is in a flood zone 
and it's very difficult to get somebody to purchase that because they're only a lim they have a limited amount of revenue that they can spend on renovations and that before it causes a, to have to be a, a, a creative a high flood insurance program. Uh, also, with this development, because of the move, they're going to create anywhere between uh, 25 and 30 new full-time jobs on this on this project. Not to mention the construction. And um, we've already dealt with their construction agent. The construction agent has agreed to and has uh, uh, worked to, to hire local contractors uh, in every way possible, sub subcontractors. So it's a good, uh, a good development area. It's, it's about a $13 million development altogether. 40,000 square foot building for Ford and eight, about an 18,000 square foot uh, building for the, for the Hyundai dealership. They're two separate buildings, by the way. I have, I have pictures and layouts. I don't know if I gave them to you. I know I showed them to the plan commission, but uh, if you guys would like to see the look of the buildings, I have uh, photos. Um, can you tell me how much in TIP revenue uh, the Nebo TIP will be losing? Uh, well, it, I, it really depends on how you, you look at it. The, uh, if this project doesn't happen, then there isn't a TIP stream flowing to anybody. Uh, this really is a true but for project. If, if the incentive isn't there, the project isn't going to move forward. So in that sense, uh, there is no TIF to be lost in terms of how much TIF this project will generate if it's incentivized. Uh, Todd, do you recall how much annually? Uh, well, right now, based on uh, what we're talking about with, uh, with the, with the um, uh, Revenue source is about a little over two hundred thousand dollars a year, but you got to keep in mind you're not really losing anything. It's it's um, it, it would either be committed or or nothing will go there. And in that aspect of it, this puts a road in that development, just like we did on the opposite side. So this creates future development, takes care of the infrastructure for any future that might come in, might might come into to right. play. One of my things is it is. I understand what you're saying, but there's already a TIP district that was created out there, and I understand you're talking about, you know, a little bit longer in time right. for the TIP district. Yeah. But I mean, even if we still kept that TIP district, I don't understand why the project couldn't go through with the TIP district that's already there, because there should be TIP dollars in that TIP district okay. to that, to help him. Am I correct? Well, that yeah, and that that I that I can answer the. Uh, uh, right now, you've got a Nebo Road TIF district that used to be completely within the county. Since the, that TIF district was created, that TIF district is now within the city limits. Uh, Indiana law kind of thinks of that as, in some ways, more the city's TIF district than yours uh, already because you could not establish a TIF district at that spot right now. Uh, uh, and so w when we first looked at this, the, the idea was that we would ask for a bond issue through the Delaware County Redevelopment Commission. Uh, and we, we were going to move forward on that plan, but then we thought, well, wait a minute, now we only have like 12 years or whatever of life left on this TIF district at the Delaware County level, including this parcel. So we thought, well, why don't we just extend the life of the parcel at the Delaware County level? That was certainly the assumption everybody was making. And then we think, oops, Indiana law does not allow you to do that because of the fact that it's come into Muncie territory. So the idea then was, well, do we have enough of a TIF stream based on the rest of the life of that parcel in the hands of Delaware County to provide the, the level of incentive that's being requested. We didn't, unless you drew in TIF from other parcels, which nobody wanted to do. We wanted the incentive tied to that one parcel, but you only had a 12-year life on it. So then we thought, well, Indiana law would allow the city 
to create a new TIF district on that parcel with a 25 year life. Uh, but it can't do that unless Delaware County lets go of that parcel. Now, you can never, you would never be able to bond against TIF from that parcel without city approval. You won't be able to bond anywhere in the Nebo Road TIF district ever without a city council approval. So you guys are kind of forced to work together in a sense. But, but th this was really kind of the odd outcome of just the intricacies of Indiana law. And again, uh, Lauren Mathis uh, and I both agreed that since we're dealing with one parcel we want to isolate, uh, we had planned to ask Delaware County to pledge the TIF from that parcel for its bond issue, but it wasn't enough, so we're asking for you to let go of that parcel and let the city do what we would be asking you to do if you had the legal authority to do it, but unfortunately you don't. Well, I, I appreciate your explanation, and, and we do want to welcome uh, that one here, and uh, I like the idea of the auto mall because that's what everybody wants, one-stop shopping. And um, it just helps to have the explanation done. And sorry that we didn't know in advance of today's meeting. I, 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 I apologize for that too, because I did make it very clear to uh, your your consultant that what we were doing. So if they didn't convey that to you, I don't have a. I don't, I don't have think all the, I don't think all the paperwork got sent. Yeah, and it takes time. And, when we all three had different jobs. And well, all I got was the resolution and the design on the back. That's all I got. I didn't have anything on the, because I know I, there's <coughs> drainage problems out there. So nobody brought anything up to us about the drainage, how you was going to work and take care of the drainage out there. Uh, <coughs> one other question that, uh, are you guys going to tie into the monthly sanitary district lines, or will you be tying into Yorktowns out there? Well, at, that, at this point in time, we're going to do our best to tie into the monthly sanitary lines, um, which is going to allow for that development also in, in future infrastructure. We'll get that in place. Um, right now, it's going to be costly to do that, and we're, we're reviewing that process. But at this point in time, we, we plan to. But we could also go across the street into the gravity flow drain that's uh, sitting on Nebo Road and hook into Yorktown. Uh, I'm going to have a meeting with the city this afternoon to determine what's, you know, if they're willing to put some investment into that themselves or, you know, should we just go across the street? So, uh, that, I mean, that's, that's, that's an undue, undue burden on, on Dellen mm -hmm. at this point in time. So, I'm, that's why I'm going to ask the sanitary district if they were willing to support that. I just thought there was agreement at one point in time with the city in Yorktown any development out on the Nebo area that was to be not, tied in? No, not only on that American Chevrolet side, and the only reason that was done uh, was because uh, at the time they needed to go to the property that was to the south, and the only way that they could go to the property to the south was to place a gravity flow drain in and hook into the Yorktown uh, system, and that was the easiest uh, method of doing that. But, but that gravity flow is there on that side to service about 60 some acres that have land that is over there and will, your town will gain plenty of that uh, opportunity that was reason for that development it I costs would, us more to do that as well i would think now would be the time for the city to face facts that they should have been out there years ago so this may push them a little bit well you know you guys are have spent a lot of money on the the uh, uh, entrance of that area and you know you want it to look nice and this is going to help that it's going to fill, fill up that other corner you got a nice uh, looking dealership that's going to go there, a road that's in place, future development. Uh, I don't think you guys can go wrong on this. This is a, this is a mutual agreement. And one of the reasons why the Redevelopment Commission gave the property to the city of Muncie because it's actually inside the city of Muncie. Well, it, and they didn't give us the property, by the way. It's well, the, what they, they didn't give you the property, right. but, but they put that area into the tip district because it's in the city it, it's correct it's, it was it was it was originally in the county when it was established right. it's been annexed right. in and now that it's in the city this is the most effective way to do it 
Uh, and um, and yes, that, that that's why their the redevelopment commission or the county redevelopment commission decided to to amend that and remove that parcel uh, to allow this process to move forward in how Mr. Pittman explained. When you cut through all the technicality of this, the, the bottom line question really is: Do you favor the incentive philosophically for sure. for uh, Dallin? Um, this won't cost the county or the redevelopment commission one cent. Uh, if you favor the incentive, this has no negative consequences to you. Right. Um, it's actually a positive because it salvages the revenue source that they're already getting. Yeah, it helps from not, from not being tied down those. by a bank. So. Yeah, but it doesn't doesn't cost you anything. It it, it enables the city to have more flexible ability to, uh, to shape an incentive, but it doesn't, it doesn't cost you guys a nickel. I move we adopt the resolution 2016-040. I have a motion, do I have a second? You got a question, James? Todd, uh, can you get us the information on what it's gonna cost with the bonding and uh, your drainage issues. I, I just like for Mr. Dillon, hate for him to get out there and have the problems with the drainage and all that stuff out there. Too. You know, uh, I, here's what I would be happy to do. Uh, you know, once this has processed, then we'll we'll go ahead and I can bring those drainage plans back to the drainage board and present those before we move forward, so that they could have uh, be aware of what we're doing and they approve those processes. Because I honestly, I'd like to have more information on this than just the resolution. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Roll call, please. Mr. Reagan. Yes. Mr. King. I'd like to have more information on this brought to me uh, than just a resolution and a picture on the back of it because I know there could be some issues and stuff out there with the drainage and some other things. Uh, but Mr. Dillon, uh, for you and your business, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, say yes on this today. But anything else, I, I would like to have the information on the, the drainage if you could get it to me. Happy to. I, I agree. Uh, I agree, we definitely and do. I'd also like to know if, if they're going to the sanitary district lines or uh, York Towns. Yep. Just like to have some more information on this. And uh, show, Todd, uh, also show me where the road's going to go in at here on Dillon Ford, if you can bring it to me. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I've got a map uh, that uh, that I can show the layout. It's, it's pretty much lined up if you look at hometown boulevard that's out there now with american chevrolet at this point in time it's going to be lined up at directly uh, east of that and go straight down uh east but i'll, I'll bring a copy and yeah. kind of show the layout and i just i have a hard time taking one business i'm moving it from one side of town I'm moving it to the other side of town uh, i'm sure the people out there where you're sitting at now are going to hate seeing you leave uh, you've been out there for quite some time but it seems like we're moving businesses from one area to another. Uh, I just really don't like starting the new tip districts and everything either. That's a big problem that I have. But honestly, it was hard for me to say yes to that about the information. Mr. Andrew. Yes. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, and we will continue to develop a, uh, uh, a, a replacement for the Ford dealership. I think there will be some advantages to that. Thank you. Thanks. Department heads and elected officials. Commissioner Henry, I just yes. wanted to give an update. Um, the EMB paving is the lead contractor for the Nebo and Jackson intersection improvement project. They plan on closing the road this morning. I'm not sure if the weather delayed them a little bit, but 
Um, that was their goal to close today, and they have a 60 calendar day closure requirement set in their contract. Um, now, if weather throws some things off, that could delay the project a little bit, but that is the goal. Um, the industrial park, they're pretty much finishing up the surface inside the park, and they'll be moving over to Hoyt Avenue and then Tillotson Extension. And Bridge 85, which is in Albany, Strong Road Bridge, has been open to traffic. There's some finishing work to be done, but uh, they can do it under, under traffic. That's all I have. Good. Busy season. Huh? Busy season. One. I hope they didn't close that road today because that rain is going to take a while. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Sure. Oh, what about the yes, uh, um, bridge at the, the reservoir? Um, I meet, we're trying to schedule a meeting for the second week of August with the contractor to determine a schedule. And but they're looking day? after Labor Day and so far. If the weather's good, how many days do you think? They can't special? have the road closed for longer than 120 days. 120. And, and they need to be open. Uh, the bridge needs to be open to traffic by the end of the year. Well, th there is a new restaurant out there at the reservoir. Okay. Very good. And um, I will let them know that it's been delayed in only 120 days, and they will be so happy mm -hmm. to hear that. Thank you. You're welcome. Sure, if we're having some issues <coughs> with the handicapped parking in front of this building, um, could you guys monitor that a little bit for us? This building's in. This one? Okay and make sure that the uh, individuals that are parking in those spaces um, have handicap stickers or plates. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. We talked about the roads out the industrial center. Mm -hmm. We're still having problems, I know, with a couple of businesses out there and the big trucks. Uh, my fear is, is that these trucks, the way they're accessing this road out there, they're eventually gonna tear down the corners of the road. So. If I can get you the names of those businesses, maybe the commissioners can send a letter to those businesses asking them to uh, watch their big trucks. Yeah, it's, it's, been um, it's been a problem out there yeah. for years, but now that we have new roads out there, I'd like to see them stay. Yeah. And especially with the, the one company building the cement holding area, if they were just pull in there, because it's that company's two different that's, departments. That's one of, that's one of the companies. Yeah. Yeah, all they need to do is pull in and have a walkie-talkie or something. We have that company there, but the one that concerns us the most is the one at the corner of uh, right. Hoyt there, Hoyt in the intersection coming into the... They don't really have center. a place to turn around or back But, but right. it's... No, and the, I was going the to talk to you about getting with Brad uh, and seeing if there's something <laughs> that we could do to help them with the flow of the traffic. That they have back there. Okay. Well, is that the company on the northeast corner? Yes. 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 Well, yes. that's the same company of Exxon. So. Oh, it is. I yeah. It's just a. Company. It's just a timing issue that when they. Mm -hmm. they, they it's their storage. Okay. They store them down on the west, and then they bring them, and you can't have two mm -hmm. trucks down there at the same. Well, there's yeah. actually a, there's actually another company right there. Yeah. There's okay. another company that's in that building. Oh, is there? Yeah, there's a separate company. Maybe there. that's the problem. Then they got so much. Yes. And the no parking signs, I guess, had been removed. During construction? Probably. Yeah, that okay. needs to be put back up on that side. Uh, I had a gentleman come in Friday morning and uh, show me pictures of them lined up and how the trucks are pulling in, and maybe we can work with the company. Okay. But, um, yeah, I appreciate the staff on top Thank of you, it. Thank you, sir. Um, Sheriff, uh, this does bring up another issue. John, uh, it's come to my attention that all the parking spaces around the courthouse, we need some kind of a ordinance to go to City Hall and get their permission to actually patrol even around our courthouse. Is that, we've never had we that didn't done? No, we've done that before. The city, the city actually does the parking control on the, on the Washington Street side. On the, oh, do they? They do. Okay. That's all one-hour parking or business-only parking. Okay. Just not in our handicap right. section. Right, right, because that's actually on the county property. Right, right. right. And we do, we do have an ordinance that And, and I do that. have a problem with just one staff, you know, person being at the front door. Is that is that the norm now due to your budget issues? Excuse me? Just one person at the door, security? Um, or maybe it's just That's all vacation. we have working right now. Yeah, maybe it's just vacation, but how they can 
actually keep track of that. You know, you might have to send someone over there. Well, that'll that'll be a, that'll be a mayor okay. deputy's position. We'll we'll just have the guys on day shift take care of that. Okay, thank you so much. That will help. Yes. We have had a lot of complaints about no place to park. Thank you, sir. And right. our employees probably need to be told too. That well, I think there are some employees that need handicapped spots. Well, yeah, um, that's. But I think we, I, I just want the sheriff's department to monitor that. If we find out that all the employees are parking down there, then well, we I don't mind an employee maybe that's loading a car mm -hmm. and spending ten minutes there. But when they come in, and um, I just, think handicapped parking is handicapped parking. If they need yeah. Load the car to the point of and we've. Technically, we really need a place for like the mailman. I think there is one out on the street for deliveries. Is that still there? No, I don't know. It's um, it says uh, deliveries, but it's tough uh, pulling in here. I don't know. Maybe since the sanitary district wants our one parking lot we down have down there, because they pay triple for some of the other properties, maybe we get three <laughs> parking lots for the price of one. Yeah. <laughs> Payment of claims, $1,127,634.10. Second. Second. A motion and a second. Roll call, please. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Henry. Yes. <coughs> Questions, comments, answers for other business? James just covered that. I'd just like to get up and invite everyone to come out to the Delaware County Fair. We've got two days under our belt of grandstand events. There's been several 4-H shows so far, and we've got a full week of fun-filled activities, so please come out and join us. Yeah, tell us about their cheerleading. That's tonight, isn't it? It is tonight. Mud and all. Well, I'm doing all my prayers for the rain to stop, <laughs> but our backup facility is the Muncie Fieldhouse, oh, so nice. if we have a problem, we'll be down at the Fieldhouse with the weather. Okay, very good. I'm just going along with Ms. Marshall. If you get a chance to visit the fair, please stop by the sheriff's office. Uh, we have a lot of deputies go out and spend some spend some free time and stuff out there. That uh, we revamped the whole office out there, uh, made it a little bit friendlier, put some more benches out front. Good. I know that the handicap parking is up there closer to the to the buildings. Thank you. So we we did that so that people can actually come up and sit down and then go park their cars. So. Um, feel free to come up. And Sheriff, um, you know, the crowds were wonderful last year. Um, I forget the um, main traffic where all the rides are, the uh, walkway. Midway? Yeah, the, right in the middle. Um, you want those people moving. You don't really want them standing there and talking in groups and blocking traffic because it's really hard to get through there. And I keep thinking about if we'd had to get a you know, an EMS gurney down through there or something. But it's just congested. It's kind of narrow. Just keep your eye on it for me, okay? Okay. Because uh, we want people to have a good time. And I really appreciate the fair in the past. The uh, carnival's been bringing benches. And I've got a lot of nice comments about there's finally a place to sit down because, you know, if someone older wants to wait, for someone, there's no used to be no place, but now they've really got a lot of those benches. Also, across from our uh, PR trailer out there, we have a dunk tank this year. And we're going to have deputies in the dunk tank, so please come. What out. night are you going to be there? Uh, I'll be in there every night. Come in, on out. In, in the dunk tank. I will be in the dunk tank. <laughs> um, I've seen I've seen Commissioner King throw baseball, so I've got I've got I've got, I've got, volley, I've got volleyballs for him, so he can nice get my grandson throw him at you. Carter, I'll let Carter dunk me. That's not a problem. But uh, all the proceeds to this uh, helps out for our kids' camp, which this year was wonderful. Yeah, we had uh, almost 80 kids in the in the week long event, and this is something we want to continue every year. So yeah, sounds good. All right, thank you. I'd like to ask Mr. Slusher, um, it and he, you really do a nice job editing this and putting the telephone number. I'm still getting calls on. Um, the potholes that have not been filled. And we do want the public to call in because we cannot be everywhere. And so uh, the brushing is really still bad. So uh, at the bottom, if uh, we'll put the highway number 747-7818 for them to call. Because uh, I got a call yesterday about a pothole down the way up, up north. 
So we appreciate them, Mr. Flusher, doing this. That's all I have. Anyone else? Can I just say something, please? I have, and this is for the sheriff's police. I have a son and a younger brother that are policemen. And all I can say is please be careful to watch your backs. That's all I want to say. And the same for you guys. I want to address that. Uh, I think we're pretty fortunate in Delaware County because we have uh, uh, two law enforcement officers sitting on the board up there. And I think that uh, uh, we handle things a little bit different than they do in other areas of the, of the country. I think we have a better rapport with a lot of our communities. You know, I, every other Tuesday I go down and speak to a group in the uh, Unity Center called the Globe Group. And these are teenage, uh, prominently uh, black or African-American kids, and I've developed a good rapport with them, and that's that's basically where we start out doing our law enforcement mm -hmm. with the kids and with the teenagers, mm -hmm. and it just develops out on as they're adults. So I think we're a little bit different than other parts of the community. The thing is, is that we've seen in these two incidents in Dallas and then this one in Baton Rouge is, it's the outside agitators that come into mm -hmm. these communities and create this thing, so yes. Exactly. We're, uh, we're trying to watch everybody's back, no matter whether it's county, city, or even our town. So thank you for that, though. Yeah. Thank you. And we appreciate our guys. And, yeah. and, they need and the gals. And the gals, correct. Okay. Bob Schroyer, 7 one uh, we Centennial. Um, I'm kind of here today to ask for uh, a little bit of clout from the commissioners. Uh, I feel with myself complaining doesn't do much good. I'm hoping that the commissioners along with Mr. Brooke could uh, possibly help out uh, the situation we've got here in Delaware County. Uh, you travel up and down the Muncie Bypass. Uh, being a farmer for all these years, we've had a big problem in the past with Canadian thistles. Yeah. The, uh, due to the fact in the 70s when the chemical roundup came around, that was the only thing we was able to combat these thistles with. Uh, uh, the thistle has ought to be killed in the root. The, it's a rhizome type uh, plant. In other words, one thistle comes up and then there's roots comes along and then another thistle comes up elsewhere from that same root. If you don't kill the root, you don't kill the thistle. Now you can maintain in like pasture ground and whatnot is to mow the thistle and keep the seeds down so that it doesn't spread. Right now, the Muncie Bypass has got enough thistles growing and actively growing and pollinating now that uh, can take care of uh, populating the whole Delaware County. I would uh, like to see a possible letter from the commissioners written along with uh, maybe some pictures that the and sent to the state to have them to try to maintain these thistles or authorize people to voluntarily come in and mow the thistles. Right. Um, it's it's going. What's happening with Roundup? It's losing its clout with the weeds. There is resistant weeds. Um, giant ragweed is one that's come along. Mare's tail is another one. Canadian thistle is just a matter of time. Yeah. before they continue to edge on into the field, become resistant to the chemicals that we're able to use, and become a statewide problem again. And if we can stop it in Delaware County, we'll maybe have a few more years without the noxious weeds. Mr. Schreier, I just appreciate you speaking because I have noticed up at Regan Road and the bypass on the northwest corner, I've never seen so many. Uh, and I was going to ask Mrs. Moyer to uh, con make her contact with the in-dot person to see. But you're right, if they don't cut those down, if, and I know the budgets are tied for in-dot, but those thistles just have to be maintained. And the county, we have, you know, a lot of debrushing around here that we need to play our part too. The horse is pretty much out of the barn this year because the thistles are are mature as they are, yeah. but they're a great time to take pictures and to notify people of the spot. that you do have a problem. Yeah. So they need to be cut like in May and June? So okay. if 
by myself just complaining to NDOC doesn't mean much. But, no, but uh, I'm hoping to get some support from the commissioners. Well, I, I appreciate you coming today. I really do. Angie, could you work I'll on that? I'll pass it on. And um, I don't see Bob here. I can't tell you how many mowers they have out right uh, now. Four. But, four. It, but it would help, too, if the property owners would maintain yeah. what they have as And, well. you know, we, um, try our best. we want to help each other. And uh, <clears throat> they had a meeting last week, and uh, we're complaining about some of the issues, but we all just have to work together, and um, it's tough out there, 800 miles of road and 1,600 miles of ditches for us to keep up. Anyone else? Make a motion recess. Second. Recess.